Now, 20 years ago, someone with an accent like mine wouldn't have gotten near a show like this. It was the Queen's English all the way. But when it comes to public information messages, it seems we commoners are still not to be trusted. Meet the faces behind some of the rather posh voices we hear every day. <laughs> BBC News at 8 o'clock. Throughout the country, thousands of disembodied voices are invading people's homes. Currently, the faces behind those voices remain unknown. Years ago, I was asked to record some announcements in case of nuclear attack. And this subsequently leaked out to the press, and I was dubbed the voice of doom. This is the wartime broadcasting service. This country has been attacked with nuclear weapons. I think clarity is important. It doesn't preclude people from having accents or dialects, but they've got to be able to communicate with as many people as possible, as, and for the listener to accept them as easily as possible. And also a sense of warmth, because you are bombing part of a person's life. You are intruding into their space. As to what people ever thought of me, I don't think I've ever asked. And the only unprompted uh, postcard I received was saying, what do you look like? You sound fat, 50 and balding. But switch your radios off now to save your batteries. Welcome to the new Voice of Orange. The person you're listening to has changed. You have one new message. I think people have reacted strongly to having a new voice because it's a voice that you listen to every day. It's like a person that you carry around with you. It's somebody you trust who tells you your information. And when all of a sudden one day you pick that phone up and it's another voice, it's not a voice you recognise, it's not your usual friend, I think it can be a bit disconcerting. I did uh, uh, speak to a lady the other day um, who thought that I actually was constantly answering the phone to people. And when I explained that there was 50 million people calling up numerous times a day and maybe I couldn't be having a conversation with her if I was in a room answering the phone, it did take her a while, but, yeah, she didn't quite understand the whole concept of it, I don't think. In ten yards, turn right. Continue straight ahead. Please leave the train. You have now arrived at your destination. I'm a sat-nav voice and I'm also a tube voice. And I recently hit the headlines after I was apparently sacked because I was misquoted in the press. All change, please. I was quoted as saying, I think the tube is dreadful and I avoid travelling on it at all costs. What I actually said to a journalist was, for me, the thought of travelling on a tube would be dreadful because I'd have to listen to my own voice and I'd be in a carriage full of people all listening to my voice thinking, oh, I wish you'd shut up. I'm sick of hearing her. All day, every day, I hear her. And for me, I'd find that mortifying. Mind the gap. I'm a Cheshire girl, and it is ironic that most of my work is in BBC English, received pronunciation. Once upon a time, an ordinary man was just a humble train driver. Until one day, his extraordinary voice was discovered on a train. His life was about to change forever. I was discovered, believe it or not, driving a train on the underground. I was basically making an announcement on the train, and I was overheard by a very influential man, and that was it. Fifteen years later, I'm still doing it. When I'm traveling on public transport, if my mobile ring, uh, rings, then I have a problem, because the second I open my mouth is a hello, everybody's like, wow. You know, it happens all the time. So I try to disguise it sometimes with my little cockney impressions of hello. Who's that? But, you know, it doesn't always work, but it's good fun to try. The 10 o'clock news now on... Oh, ...in a lavish three-part adaptation. The 10 o'clock news on Radio 4. Girls chase their the main news so far, BBC News... ...bath for the girl nine later. Wintry showers, then rain, moderate. That's the end of the shipping forecast from me, Zeb Sones, on behalf of all of us here. Have a very peaceful night. Good night. I've been reading the shipping forecast for about six years, and most people imagine that I'm probably about 50, 
One producer came into the studio and she was looking for me. She'd never met me before. And she said, I'm looking for Zeb Soans. And I said, yes. Uh, she said, where is he? And I said, well, that's me. And she said, no, it's not. You have a beard. And I said, I'm sorry. And she said, in my head, you have a beard, which just goes to show how strongly people visualize the voices that they hear. I sometimes feel as if I'm a 50-year-old trapped in a 30-year-old's body, but hopefully one day I'll grow into my voice. Thank you ever so, Zeb. That was simply wizard.